Within Studio One, we have two separate types of tracks that we can use to capture our musical performances, and those are instrument tracks and audio tracks. Our instrument tracks record MIDI performances from, say, a MIDI controller, and I've already put together a tutorial on working with instrument tracks, so if you're interested in finding out more about that, just check the link above here. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover the ins and outs of working with audio channels from adding them to detailed configuration. Let's go ahead and get started then. Now I'm gonna press F5 to get rid of the browser. We won't really be needing that much here. Uh, and we have several ways in which we can add audio tracks. We can come to the top menu here and then choose track and then at the very top, add tracks. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of here. We can also right click within the track column and choose add tracks. I'll cancel out again. And perhaps the most simplest way that we could use would be to press T on our QWERTY keyboard and we then have our add tracks window here as well. Now the add track dialog is going to allow us to really fine tune a few things about our audio track before we actually create it. But just know that before we go into the details here, we can always come back up to the top here where we have track and we saw we can add bring about that window by clicking add tracks but we also have some quick access things here where we can add an audio track on a mono one we can add a stereo one and we can see what else here I thought there was another one for audio down below Oh, add tracks for all inputs on your audio device, so that's available as well. Now, if I were to click on this add track mono, then we bypass that window where we can adjust certain uh, settings for the track, and we immediately add a mono track here. Now, I can also right-click within the track column there, and we can see we have these shortcuts to adding tracks here as well. And I'm going to go ahead and, while this track is selected, press shift and T to remove that out. And that's how we can remove our audio tracks using the keyboard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press T to bring up the add tracks window again here. Now at the very top, we have name. And in this field, we can, as it implies, go ahead and put a name for our track. I'm actually gonna just call this vocal. And then I'm going to tab down to the next field here. And that is the type. And then here we can choose the type of track that we're adding. And in this tutorial, we're working with audio, so this works just fine. But know that you can use your up and down arrows on your QWERTY keyboard to move through the different types of tracks here. And I'll just arrow up to come back to the audio. And just keep in mind that when we're working within this dialog for adding tracks, we really don't even need to grab our mouse. If I just press shift, then I can navigate through all these different fields. While I'm in this checkbox area, I can press enter to select that. I can press enter again to toggle that on and off. If I'd like to move back up, I can hold down shift and use tab to come back up. And so now we'll move on to the count. And if I change this to any number higher than one, we're actually going to have the pack folder become available. So if I were to press four here uh, and then come back up here, we can now choose to pack those four tracks that we're adding within a folder in our range view. So this could be useful for, say you've got six mics set up on a drum, uh, live drums, and you would like to create a folder just for the drum tracks, then you could go ahead and just press enter and select that there. I'm gonna deselect that because we're not gonna use a folder in this tutorial. And then moving on, we have color. Now by default, Studio One is set to auto color and it's just gonna go ahead and assign a color to your tracks uh, as it sees fit. We can actually, I'll press enter, actually I'll hit tab, so let me shift and tab back up. I'll press enter and now we make the color palette available. So if I click on that arrow, we can then come here and choose a color for our tracks. I'll go ahead and reselect that auto color and then tab down to our format. And here we have the option to choose between mono and stereo. So if I arrow down, we can see stereo. I'll arrow, arrow up and we have mono. I'll just click to expand that out so you can see that there. For most of the work that you're doing is most likely gonna be mono, unless you've got a stereo mic set up to record, say a small group of singers or um, to mic a drum set. But typically we're just gonna be using mono. I'll tab onto the next field here and here we have preset. 
And so from this drop down menu here, we can actually choose a preset effects chain to load onto our audio channel. And if you're watching this, you're probably new to audio recording in DAWs or in general. So just know that an effects chain is a series of effects devices that can be applied to our incoming audio. So for instance, if we were to go ahead and expand out that menu, we'll come to the vocals. If we just hover over for a second, it's gonna automatically expand out. Let's go ahead and choose, say this uh, female live there. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And so we now have four audio tracks that have been added and each of them should have the effects chain for a female vocal. If I, while this is selected, I'm gonna F3 and open up the console. And then we can click on this right arrow to expand that out. And we can see these are the particular effects that have been added. This is our effects chain here. So we have a compressor, a pro EQ, an expander, and Ampire. So if I click once, then we can see kind of a mini view of some of the settings within these. I'll click once on the pro EQ, the expander. Now, if I double click, then we go ahead and open up that device. And these are gonna be have some preset parameters within this based for a female vocal. But one thing you want to be careful with in, in using these presets for an individual effect device and for the uh, effects chains, these are not going to work for every singer that you have just because they're a female. If you have someone who has an incredibly strong voice and they're just belting out their vocals, then these are going to respond a lot differently than someone who has a weaker voice and is a bit more quiet and has a different sound. So these may be good starting points and good for you to learn what some of the effects you can use to accomplish certain things, but you really want to come in and make your own adjustments and, and tailor them for each unique individual that you're going to be working with. So I'm going to click the arrow to close that F3 to come out of our console. I'm going to actually hold shift and use my up arrow to select all of these tracks, then shift T to remove those out. I'm going to press T so we can come back and finish up in our uh, add tracks window here. Okay, where were we? Uh, the preset area. So let's tab down to the input. Now this is where we can choose the particular input that we'd like to capture audio from on our audio device. Now if I go ahead and click on this down arrow to expand out, I only have two options and that is because my particular interface only has two ins and two outs. So here for the input selection, I have input left and input right. And those represent the two inputs on the front of my audio interface. If I come down to the output here, then we can see that I have main. And this is just, I only have two outs, so that's gonna be a stereo, and that's why we only have the main available. Now what about the naming here? Can we do anything about the naming? If we don't want to have this input L, say we wanna have something that's more representative of our actual setup, We'll take a quick detour again and I'll cancel out of here. Now, if we were to come to song and then at the bottom we have song setup, we can see we have audio input output set up there. We can click on that. I'm gonna cancel out just to show that we can also click on the sample right here within the transport bar to access the same song setup menu. Come to the audio input output setup and then it's here we can see how these are named, input L, input R for left and right. We also have a stereo here, and we can actually have these little meters that we can see our incoming signal, which is me actually narrating the video right now that is causing that activity. But we do have the option to rename these for each individual song. So we can just double click there, and then I can call this mic one and click out of that area and then apply that and uh, we'll see how that makes uh, a change in our settings in a second here. But just know that when we make these changes here, it's only going to be for the particular song that we're working in. If you would like to set something up that is going to remain throughout Studio One, then you wanna to choose to make that as your default. Now I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the second one here and this is actually a quarter inch uh, input on my audio interface. So I'm just going to call this INST for instrument. And I'm going to click out of there to accept that. 
And I'm not going to make this as a default. I'm just going to use this for this one song and tutorial. And actually, I'm going to double click here and then choose to call this stereo. And then as I mentioned, I have two inputs and two outs. So here on our inputs tab, we can see input one and input two. These are directly related to the physical inputs on my um, audio interface. Now to the left here and vertically, these names represent what I'm going to see within the DAW. And uh, these boxes here essentially make the connections active. So input one, if I want to use this on mic one, then this needs to be checked with this box. If I deselect that, then there's not going to be any signal being received by Studio One. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and then I'm going to press T to come back to our Add Tracks window. And then now we can see input, we have mic one instead of input L. And then we can see we have our instrument input. Those have been renamed. So now you have a better understanding of uh, how you can make any adjustments to the naming scheme within your system if you'd like. Now, finally, we have ascending, and this is going to be next to our input and output. Now, these can be used if you're going to add multiple tracks, say six for vocals, and you name the track at the top vocal. Uh, Studio One will then create six audio tracks, and the first will be called Vocal One, and then go to input one on your audio device. The second will be named vocal two and will be assigned to input two on your audio device and so on. Now ascending for output is exactly the same but just for your outputs. So I've still got four selected for our audio and it's named vocal. So let's go ahead and click OK to add those. And even though I didn't choose ascending to have these applied to different channels on my uh, audio interface, we can see that Studio One went ahead and named these sequentially vocal one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift and press E on my QWERTY keyboard to expand those out. And one thing to note is that we can change the input for our tracks at any time and we're not stuck with the input output settings we've made within the add track dialog. Within the track column here, we can click the drop down menu just below our track level control. And then we can see here we've got our instrument input. So we could change this at any time. And then we can even access our audio input output setup uh, from there as well. I'll go ahead and cancel out. And if I press F4, we access the inspector. And we can change the input here as well. We can also change the output here. If we actually had another one to choose from besides the two out for the stereo that I have on mine. So here to the left and towards the bottom, we can see there's mic one, and then we can choose, make the selection there for our in. Then below that, we have our output selection. And again, we only have main available because I only have two outs and that's for our stereo main out. We also have a channel mode button here, which we can actually change between stereo and mono for our uh, channel here. You can see that that's changed to stereo up above. If I click one more time, then we move back to mono. We also have mute, solo, record enable, monitor. We have uh, adjustment for panning. I'll control click to take that back to center. And we also have level control. And to the right, we have an area for adding inserts and sends. So if we click on the plus symbol there, then we're taken to a menu where we can choose to add different effects to this audio channel. And I'll go ahead and press F4 to close out that inspector. And I'll press F3 to open up our console. And here we can see that we have similar control for our audio tracks here. So at the very top of our channel, we have a drop down menu for choosing a different input or selecting none if we'd like to disable that. Directly below, we can choose an output. We then have our panning control. I'll control click to set that back. And we can actually even double click and type a value in for the panning. We can double click in our level area to set something there. I'll put minus 10 and press enter. And we can see that that's been taken down. I can control click to set that back to zero dB. We then have mute solo record enable I'm sorry, monitoring record enable. And then here we have a right facing arrow, which we can click on to open up the inserts and sends panel.
And as we just saw with the inspector, we can click on the plus symbol to choose, uh, to open up this menu where we can choose an effect to, or multiple effects to add to our channel. Now, earlier in the tutorial, we talked about presets and uh, preset effects chains that are available for us to add. And this was within our add tracks dialog window that we saw that. But one thing you should know is that if you'd like to create your own effects chains, you can do that. And then those will be available within the add tracks window when you're creating your tracks. So the way that we could do that is if I were to click on the plus symbol, I'm just going to come to the personas folder there and expand that out, drag over well, I think I double clicked on that and added an analog delay to the inserts. I'm going to then choose, I'm just gonna choose anything here. I'm gonna click on the expander that's been added and I'm gonna add one more here, the uh, Empire. Close that out. So now we have three different effects with on this particular channel. So say we wanna use this for for it could be for anything. Say we want to have this as a preset effects change for recording a bass drum. We can then click this down arrow and then at the bottom store effects chain. And then that's how we can do that. So then when we're creating or adding our audio tracks and we go to the preset area, this will then show up there and then you can easily access there, which can save you time when you're working on your mixes. We can also choose to replace effects chain default which is here and you can always you can create something that's going to be your default whenever you select there as well we can always power our effects on and off by clicking the power button there individually we can click the power button at the top to deactivate all at once if we would like to remove then we can click on this down arrow and then choose remove at the bottom I'm going to go ahead and click the arrow here, which is now facing left to close out our panel. Now, while we're in here in the console, know that we do have input meters available that can help us with monitoring our signals. So if I come over to the left here, we can see inputs at the top of this list here. If I go ahead and click once on that, then we can see we have these meters where we can see the audio signal coming in, which is actually my narration. At the very top, we can change the input for our meter at any time, or we can just choose none to disable that meter completely. Now I'll go ahead and click the inputs to hide this. And we have a similar panel for our outputs, but if I click that, then nothing's going to happen because, you know, as I've said throughout the tutorial, I only have two outs on my audio interface, and those are already represented by the main uh, channel here, the output channel. Now that we've seen our audio tracks represented in the console, let's move back to the arrange view and I'll press F3 to do that. And next I wanna just talk about a few shortcut keys that can help you with, uh, you know, speeding up your productivity when you're working with your audio tracks. So as you've already seen, I can use the up and down arrows to choose between these different uh, tracks. If I hold down shift while using the up and down arrows, then I can select multiple consecutive tracks. So I'm holding shift and using the down arrow. Now I'm using the up to deselect. So if I just press the down arrow, we move individually. I'll hold shift and press the up arrow, and then I can select all of these tracks at once. I'm gonna press shift and then use the up arrow. Now, while we have our first vocal one track selected, I can press M, which will mute that track. We can toggle by pressing M on our QWERTY keyboard. S will solo that track. R will record enable that track. And U will turn on the monitoring. Now, if you notice that when I use the up and down arrows to select the tracks or whether I click on these, uh, nothing really happens here, but we can choose how these tracks respond to being selected with the mouse or with the arrow keys. So if I control comma on the keyboard and then come to the advanced section here and then select the console tab, we can see that audio input follow selection is deselected. And actually, I think this is on by default and I've, I've come in and uh, unchecked that myself. I'm pretty sure that's already on. But if I go ahead and check that and then apply, okay, now you'll see the different behavior when I select these tracks.
now whenever I select a track there, it's automatically uh, record enabled, arm for recording, and the monitor turns on. Now I'm going to go ahead and control comma to come back to the options menu and our advanced and console. I'm going to go ahead and actually deselect that and apply. But keep in mind that we also have auto track, audio track monitoring follows record. So that's why our monitoring became active whenever we the track was record armed as well. If you don't want it to be automatically monitoring when you record, then just deselect that. We also have a tape style feature here that we can choose from. So I'm just going to press OK here and come back to our range view. Select this vocal one track. And actually, I'm going to press R and arm this for recording. Now, I pressed U on my keyboard to disable the monitoring so that I won't have any feedback here. And I'm going to go ahead and press the asterisk on my number keypad or the numeric keypad and just go ahead and start recording my narration right here because there is something else that I would like to show you when you're working with your audio tracks and audio events. I'll press the space bar to stop. And actually, I'm going to press E on the keyboard to expand out a bit here. And let's scroll forward. I'll press W to zoom out a bit. So one thing to keep in mind is that whatever we have our tempo set down below, that is going to be embedded within our audio event and our audio file that's created. So if I right click on this, we can see that the file tempo is 40 beats per minute. And so that's going to be included within the metadata of this audio file. And I'm just going to click in the range view to close that window out. And what this means is that if I press F4 to open up the inspector, we can see that this, the mode for this track is set to time stretch. So if I were to change the tempo for this song, say to 120, notice that this audio event basically stays at the beginning of bar one and its same position at the end of bar uh, two. If I come and change this to 80, you can see it still stays the same. So Studio One is taking, when we have time stretch set as the mode for tempo, Studio One is paying attention to that encoded BPM information of 40 uh, here, the file tempo, and then adjusting it accordingly. So it's slowing down or speeding up this audio while keeping the same pitch. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and move this out to bar two here and change this to 160. So we can see that we still stay at the front of bar two and the position at the end still stays in the same area. Now, if I change the tempo mode to don't follow, now you can see that this already changes and is uh, kind of stretched out, so to speak all from beginning to bar two to the middle of bar eight here. And if I go ahead and change the tempo here to say 50 beats per minute, once I press enter, this audio event is gonna keep its relative, its absolute position here and will not move uh, in relation to the change in our uh, grid and timeline. So I'll go ahead and press enter to accept the 50 BPM change. So you can see this stays in its exact position there. I'm going to control Z to undo that tempo change. And now I'm going to change this to follow. So now with this set to follow, when I make a tempo change, the beginning of this audio event is always going to stay on two. So I'll change that to 50. Now we can see that that follows to two. If I change to 200, then it stays on too. Now it's not being pitched up or down or stretched. It's not taking into account the 40 BPM that's embedded within this audio event and file. It's just keeping the beginning of this event always on bar two because we want it to follow, but we are not time stretching. If I select that, then you can see now we're stretching that audio. And the last thing that I want to mention about this and the last thing for this tutorial is if I come to the start and choose to create a new song, we can see here stretch audio files to song tempo is selected. And so I'm just going to cancel out and come back to our song. As long as that is selected, 
at the beginning of your song, each audio track that you create is automatically going to be in time stretch mode for the tempo. If you deselect that, then it's going to be on don't follow. Now we could also click the sample right here and we have access to the stretch audio files in two song tempo at any time. So if we want to disable that, we've already created our song, then we could just come here and take care of that and deselect there. So I'll cancel out. And so for such a basic topic, there was actually a lot to cover here. And I hope that uh, this helps you feel a bit more comfortable with working with your audio tracks and recording audio within Studio One 3. And if you're someone who's already familiar with Studio One 3, hopefully you got a few new nuggets of information here if you decided to stick around and watch the video. So we'll finish up here. Thanks for watching, guys.